Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to the Beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, we are going to dive into two very important topics that determine how and who can access your objects. We do this through access control and namespaces. Access control simply determines who can access various aspects of your objects. When you created a struct in the last episode, you added a couple of instance variables. Both of those instance variables were prefaced with the keyword public. Can you guess what this keyword does? It indicates that anyone can read or write to the variables. Now, what will happen if you change the keyword to read private instead? The variables are no longer accessible. If you try to read or write to any of them, you'll receive a compile error. By limiting what code can access on your object, you protect it from any changes that may make the object unstable. Think about what would happen if everything was public. The number of lives could be set to negative 1000. A two-player game could spawn 100 different other players. You'd be able to access the internal structure of any object and make changes. By doing this, you put your game in an unstable state, which at best could result in a crash. Worst, it could corrupt your user's data. C Sharp has many different access control modifiers. In Unity, we're concerned with just four of them, public, private, protected, and internal. Public means anyone can access the property or method. It's as you'd expect, whereas private means only the object itself can access the property or method. You'll see this in action in the next episode. Protected allows the property or method to be accessible within subclasses, as you'll learn later in the next section. Internal is the last access modifier, and it is the default modifier. It just states that the property or method can be accessed in the same assembly. An assembly is just a pre-compiled bit of code that can either be a library or application. For instance, you can think of your Unity project as one assembly. By setting a variable to internal, outside applications or libraries will not be able to access it. Starting out, this won't affect you at all. For the most part, you'll be using public, private, and protected. As you progress through this course, you'll gain an understanding of the various access modifiers and when to use them. Next, we move on to namespaces. A typical object you may find in a Unity game is called player, which represents the person playing the game. Now, imagine you were importing some code that also has a player object. Which player would Unity use? The answer is neither, the program won't run. This is solved by using namespaces. A namespace makes objects unique. This allows you to have objects with the same name in the same assembly. If you imagine objects to be houses, then the namespace is the actual mailing address. Instead of saying, meet me at the Blue Craftsman, you would write, meet me at the Blue Craftsman located at 12 Elm Street in Joe, Idaho. By being specific, there's no chance of confusion. And that confusion, when two objects have the same name, is called a namespace collision. This namespace address is just a string of information, but like all things in C-sharp, there is a naming convention to it. Microsoft provides some documentation on how to name your namespaces. It boils down to this. You can see this in action in Unity itself. For instance, Unity uses the namespace for the user interface, unityengine.ui. Here's how it works. At the start of your code, you provide the namespace keyword. Next, you provide the name. Following Microsoft's guidelines, I'll put Ray Winderlich dot beginning C sharp with unity dot namespace lesson. After which I'll provide a pair of braces. Now all my code will exist in those braces. To access any objects I create in that code, I must provide the fully qualified namespace like so. As you can see, this makes your code a little bit unwieldy. What you are actually seeing is known as the fully qualified address. Thankfully, you can avoid writing fully qualified namespaces by using the using keyword to import the namespace like so. Now I can access the high score object just as I normally would. 
I can just use the name of the object as opposed to using the complete fully qualified namespace. But if I do run into a collision, then I can defer back to using the fully qualified name. Believe it or not, you've been using namespaces throughout this course. Every file starts with using systems.collections and using Unity Engine. This is why you haven't been writing fully qualified names in your Unity script so far. For the most part, you won't be writing namespaces, but accessing them. If you ever intend to provide code to work in another project, then you'll definitely need to use them. Let's see this in action. Okay, in this demo, we're gonna be covering namespaces and access control. And we'll start off with access control. And we'll do this by creating a new script called alien. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script, name it alien, and we're going to dive into Visual Studio. So here we have this alien script right here. Now you'll notice if I create an alien struct, we're going to run immediately into an error. And this is due to namespaces. And we'll cover this in just a moment. But to avoid this error for now, we'll just call this my alien. Okay, so this alien's going to have some hit points. And I can declare this as public, and we'll just call it public int hit points, like so. By declaring it public, anyone can access these hit points now. So let's do this and start. Here we go. We've set the hit points to 100 for the alien. And as I mentioned, it's due to this public modifier. But if we delete this or switch it to private, you'll see that immediately we're getting a compile error. And it says hit points is inaccessible due to its protection level, meaning this field is no longer accessible from outside of the struct itself. Now notice this, if I delete private and leave it as so, we come back down here and you notice we're still having this compile error. By default, C Sharp assigns the internal access modifier to things. But in this case, we're inside of a struct. And when you're inside of a struct or in a class, then C Sharp will assign it pr a private access modifier instead. Now this struct itself is labeled as internal. So I could do this internal like that. And that's the same thing as doing this. But in here, this is not internal, this is actually private. If I switch this to internal, like so, then now this script can access this field. We're gonna switch this back to public. And now look what happens if I set this to private. By setting this to private, you can see here we get another compile error. And this time, my alien is inaccessible. So I can't even create an instance of this struct. So as you can see, access modifiers don't work with just fields. They work with structs. Later, you'll see that they work with methods and so forth. And of course, there's also a protected access modifier. Now, protected is meant to be working with subclasses. In structs, you can't subclass a struct, so you can't use it. But within a class, you certainly can. And as you can see here, we've created a protected variable called health. If we try to do the same thing within this alien struct, you'll see we get an error. And again, the reason is we can't use protected inside of structs. Okay, so let's get back to our original problem. We want to actually use this alien script inside of my alien class. And what's going on is we're actually in the same namespace as the alien. This is known as the global namespace. So if I did something like this, we're gonna get that compile error back again. So we need to create another namespace. So I'm gonna type namespace. And in this case, I'm gonna put in the name Ray Winderlich. And we'll call this beginning C sharp. 
and we'll call this demonstration. So there's my namespace, and I'm going to put this alien inside of that. Now, when I save this, you can see that this compile error has gone away. This alien class is in the global namespace, whereas this alien is now in the actual Ray Winderlich beginning C sharp demonstration namespace. Now, the way we want to instance this is from here. We'll just type Ray Winderlich, period, beginning C sharp. And we're going to be providing the fully qualified address. And there we go. Now we can access the alien, no problem, within the alien class. As I mentioned in the lecture, you're typically going to be accessing namespaces as opposed to being writing them. And you do that by using this using keyword. So let's imagine we want to access the text element in the Unity UI. The way we would do that is we type in using and we type Unity Engine period UI. Now with that, I have access to this text element. So if I want to create a public variable, I can now type in public text we'll say uh, player name, if we wanted to print the player name on the screen. But if I delete this namespace, now C Sharp has no idea what class I'm representing by this text. So this is completely unknown to it because we're not using the namespace. I can solve this problem by actually typing this by hand like so, and now I can have access to the text element again. Typically, you'll know you're running into a problem when you're not seeing your this class or struct in your code completion. So let's say I'm gonna create this text again, and I start typing text, and you can see here, I don't see it anywhere, and that's because I'm not using its proper namespace. So I can come back up here, and now we'll type using it again. And now if I start typing text, and you can see it's available to me because I'm using this namespace now. Well, that's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a player struct that contains two fields. One is the first name and the other is the last name, and then put it in its own namespace. Then I want you to create a new instance of it and so assign it your first and last name and print out those values to the console using on disable. Finally, create a different player struct in another namespace and give it the fields, initials, and score. Again, I want you to create this in the same on disable as the other player struct, and then I want you to assign it some values and then print it out to the console. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, in your challenge, I asked you to create two different types of player objects and then instance them in the same script. So we're going to do that now and we're going to create a new script to do this and we'll just call this players like so. Okay, the very first thing that I'm going to do is create a new struct and we're going to call this player. And the struct's going to have two fields and I'm just going to make them public. And this the first one is called first name and the last one is last name. In on disable, we'll create ourselves a new instance of this player. Okay, so here you see we've created a new player. We assigned the first name to Ray and the last name to Wonderlick, like so. And this is stuff we've all been doing before. Now let's create an entirely new player. In Unity now, I'm going to create another C Sharp script, and we're going to call this player. So we're going to delete this, and we're going to create another namespace. So we'll call this namespace. And again, we're going to call this Ray Wonderlick.
And then I put in my braces. And now remember, everything that goes between these braces will now be within this new namespace. Next, I'm going to define my player object. So now if we come back here, now we're going to add our second player. The way I do this is I'm going to use the fully qualified name. So I can just type Ray Winderlich and hit the period. And you can see we get this code completion that helps me work with the namespace. So we've defined the type. Now we're going to create a new instance of it. And again, we have to use the same namespace. Now we can just simply reference the variable to set the values. And that's how we have two players within the same method. 